Hello, everyone, and thanks a lot for tuning in to VMworld's Code Session 2762. My name is Robert Guske. I'm a lead Tanzu Emerging Solution Engineer, and I'm very excited to be your host for the next 30 minutes, um, and we will cover the topic, uh, do-it-yourself deployment of event-driven automation in your vSphere environment. Please, and at the first, um, read carefully um, our disclaimer, but that much or that has to be said, um, I will mostly talk about open source project and open source initiatives. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so I will talk about the open source project VMware Event Broker Appliance. And this project is a community driven open source project. It was officially released as a VMware fling back in 2019 by William Lamb and Michael Gash at VMworld Time. And what's about this project? So I can say that we are definitely heavily interested in events because with such events, we can um, apply event-driven architectures and do something with it. So and when I mean do something with it, I mean, for example, conditional statements like if this, then that. So means if a specific event is coming in and we are interested in this event, then do the following. So if this, then that. So and let's take as an first example and as the first system, our vCenter server. So the vCenter server itself, just for example, has over 1,800 unique events. And those events, uh, most of the time, it induces um, state changes to specific entities. And one entity could be a virtual machine, for example. So just imagine we power on a virtual machine or we power off a virtual machine. This is a state change. So it is, and then it is written in past tense. So VM powered off or VM powered on. So another example could be that you do a configuration change on this particular or on a particular virtual machine, and then the event will be VM reconfigured event. So those are events which we, which we can make use of and then do a certain actions. For example, you can be notified or do a, an automation task, for example. So, and speaking of use cases, with your help, and we do much appreciate your help and your feedback, especially, um, we um, developed a couple of use cases over the past two years. Um, so in use cases can be in areas like notification or auditing, remediation, automation, analytics, you name it. So really a lot. And VBAR itself, so VMware Event Broker Appliance is and fling, and it is in an appliance form factor. So and this is um, one of the first topics I'd like to cover. So the deployment method. So we have two deployment methods. The first one is, again, it is the um, OVA deployment. And what you do is you download it, you download um, the OVA file, and then you deploy it to your vSphere infrastructure. And let's take a look a deeper look into the appliance. So, and especially what it is made of. So the first thing is we, of course, we need an operating system and we decided to go with VMware Photonas. So it's a light white cloud native application optimized um, operating system. And then we need a platform, a platform to run modern workloads. Of course, this is in our uh, example here and it, yeah, it is Kubernetes. So, and then we need um, other, um, components uh, which reserve our workload, for example, for networking or ingress capabilities. And, and in this case, it is entry on contour. And um, to enable those event-driven architectures, those event-driven patterns, we need an event processor. We need another platform. And this platform, in our case, is Knative. So Knative is a modern platform for serverless workloads. And I will cover um, the building blocks, the main building blocks of Knative in a bit. So, and then we need another component and this component is the e VMware event router. So we need a component which will connect to the vCenter server system event stream. 
and we'll take those events and forward it to subscribers. Okay, this is the VMware event router part. And then, and this is, it, is, is now specific to the appliance. Um, based on your feedback and customers implementations and so on, we need to implement more and more day, uh, day two capabilities, more enable more day two features. And those features are, for example, um, that we enable the, um, the um, uh, syslog server endpoint configuration. So during your OVA deployment, so this opinionated installation with that way, kind of way, um, you can um, configure a syslog server endpoint. And we use um, Fluent Bit as the log processor log forwarder uh, component here. And the other one is um, C Advisor. So C Advisor is for resource consumptions, um, resource utilization. So it provides metrics. And this gives us another um, great ability. And this is that we, for example, can connect VRealize Operations Manager um, to this endpoint, to the C Advisor daemon set endpoint, and then um, take those metrics and um, build um, custom dashboards, for example, to monitor um, the utilization and as well as the state of the VBA appliance. And in general, sp or speaking in general, um, this, this way to use this modular approach gives us um, this huge extensibility options and possibilities here. All right, and I've mentioned that we have a second method and the second installation method is that we, or that you could use um, an existing Kubernetes with Knative installation. And then on top of it, you can um, deploy via a Helm chart the event router. And what we are going to do, and we will focus on it, we will um, cover this installation, the specific part here um, in, this, in this session here. Um, what I will show you in a bit is that I, I have a vSource Tanzu installation in my, in my environment running, which means I have a dedicated um, Tanzu Kubernetes cluster for my Knative. Um, installation. And the good thing here is that out of the box, the default container networking interface is entry in our case. So this is, I can make a cross on this. Um, so we need the components on the right side um, are um, so is the left. Um, so we need to install Knative. We will do it step by step. Then the contour part for ingress capabilities and then the event router. And of course, at the end, and I would conclude my demo with it, I will um, deploy a function example to show you, um, for example, a notification use case. Um, the great thing here is um, regarding um, virtual IP addresses, I don't have to care about it because vSphere with Tanzu ships um, the AVI load balancer with it, and I will automatically get assigned a virtual IP address for my new workload, which means, for example, my functions at the, my function at the end. Okay, and speaking of um, extensibility, what I've mentioned earlier, as well as I, I've mentioned a couple of times, Helm, um, I like to highlight um, our Bitnami um, acquisition here. So it was already done in I think two years ago, and Bitnami is a core contributor to Helm and um, provides a lot of already and up and running um, or ready to consume Helm charts, our 90 plus. And all are available on the VMware marketplace. So just go to marketplace.vmware.com and you can, for example, filter um, for a form factor in maybe of interest in, in this case, Kubernetes. And then you see a couple of um, already um, packaged application and services, which you can then deploy in your Kubernetes installation via Helm. Okay, I will start with my demo now, but before I do so, I will, um, I will mention the following. I'm, I'm using a demo script so that I can concentrate on speaking or not on typing. Um, I prepared this demo script and I made it public available on my GitHub repository. So check out, just uh, scan the QR code or use the shortened URL down below and um, you will find everything and can um, make your hands dirty. Um, this is something I will cover later. Okay, jump to my environment. Here we go. So again, I have an vSphere with Tanzu enabled environment running. 
Um, I have already deployed a Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. This is this one here, one control plane Kubernetes virtual machine and two workers. And I have an AVI controller, which provides um, my load balancing um, features. Um, so you see here that my control plane, um, but, so my control plane Kubernetes nodes, for example, have already an, a, a, a virtual IP assigned. And um, I have a, two, a tons of Kubernetes cluster running where I installed Harbor, also via Helm, by the way. And um, this is why you see here Harbor is popping up two times. So with the address 17 and 14, because one is for the control plane for them and the other one is for the Harbor service so that I can reach the the website of Harbor. So why I'm mentioning it, um, you see here that the Knative control plane um, node has already the VIP assigned. And um, we will see later when I deploy Contour and, with, and Contour ships Envoy with it, um, then a uh, new virtual IP address will be popping up here. Okay, so let's get started. On my terminal window, um, just to just to to um, explain you the order of my windows. On the big window, you see all the Kubernetes pods with inside of my Kubernetes cluster. On the top right, that is the VMware functions namespace. So there will be just one pod later on, um, which is my function. And at the bottom, um, this is the VMware system namespace. So at the point where I will install the VMware event router, it will pop up uh, there at the bottom so that it is a little bit more clear right there. Okay, so I will start the script right now. So we will start with the first building blocks, Knative Serving. So what is Serving all about? Um, Knative Serving, um, as the name suggested, is um, all about um, workload routes and configure so so revisions and out of scaling. So let me start with out of scaling. Um, can it have out of the box or has an out of the box out of scaling feature from zero to many and back to zero. So this is extremely cool, which means if traffic comes in and um, you can specify the scaling amount of, of entities, um, it will scale up your application, your serverless workload. And if no traffic anymore comes in, then it will scale down to zero, which is extremely resource efficient. And um, the other example, for example, are routes. So, and you can um, do with the routes, you can do uh, traffic splitting. So a certain amount of percentage um, of the traffic which is coming in uh, get to this revision. So a revision is the in point snapshot of your code of your application. Uh, let, let's name it version one and you have another revision, version two. Um, and then you can decide how many of the traffic will hit this revisions. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So let's start um, with the core components of Knative Serving. So we need um, on, on Kubernetes, we need um, the um, serving CRDs and uh, core components. So CRDs are uh, Kubernetes custom resource definitions. So and now you see on the on the upper window, on the big, a big terminal window, that there is an activator, an autoscaler, and controller, and some um, some other pods are coming up. So uh, so much uh, is to say the activator as well as the autoscaler plus the queue proxy are responsible for auto scaling your, your workload. So for example, the activator, if the, your workload is scaled to zero, the activator will take the traffic, will hold it, will spin up um, then the, the pod, your, your workload, and then um, route the traffic to it. Okay, so CRDs and core components are installed. The next thing is, um, that we need to install um, the, the ingress controller uh, controller to satisfy the networking needs for Knative serving, for example. Okay, we are going to install it. And again, I've mentioned it. Let's check the, the AVI interface because we should see that the Envoy is requesting a virtual IP address here. Ah, there it is. So it is coming up here. It is 18. 15 at the end, 10, 10, 18, 15. 
Okay, we will wait until all pods are initialized and I will take a water. Perfect. It's up and running. So the next thing is um, we need to um, to um, tell Knative Serving that we decided to go with control. There, of course, there are other um, ingress controllers you can go with, but we decided to go with control. Okay. So um, we requested the virtual IP address from our from our um, from our Avi load balancer. So this IP address again is 10, 10, 18, 15. And now we um, export um, this IP address or a more specific, a complete domain because uh, normally the config domain for Canadian serving for the roads um, is a road namespace and then the default domain. And we like to configure as a custom domain in our case, 10, 10, 18, 15.nipio. Um, this is because of the DNS naming resolution um, thing so that it is easier for us because I don't have wildcards implemented here in my environment. Okay, um, kubectl patch. So now we are patching the config domain. It is patched. So serving, everything is done for serving. So the next topic is knative eventing. Um, it is the same version as for um, serving. It is 026. The first thing we do is um, the same as for Knative Serving, we install the custom resource definitions as well as the core components, so controllers, et cetera. And while this is installing, let me switch back to my PowerPoint presentation to show you the, the picture, because just to make it a little bit more easier to understand what we will do now. So um, there are some certain terms um, for, for eventing. So, we have producers, we have sources, we have brokers, triggers, and services, which is basically an event producer is a system which produces the, the event, right? So in our case, the vCenter server. And then we have an event source. So the event source is, um, is, is connecting to the system and forwards um, those events to, to a broker. And the broker routes those events um, specifically to, um, to services. And you see here on the on the on the picture there's a trigger so a trigger is nothing else than the description of the event in which we are interested in so vm powered on event is coming in it is forwarded or routed by the by the broker the trigger sees this event and forwards it to the service so that the service or better call it the function your code will be invoked. So and this is the whole line. And this is what we are now going to install. So I will switch back to uh, my Horizon client. All right, the core components for eventing are up and running. Everything looks fine. So we start with the in-memory channel. Um, so much is to say for in-memory channel, it is not for production. Um, for production use cases, you should um, use a persistent um, channel. Um, which could be RabbitMQ, for example. Uh, in Viva, in the appliance, we are using Revit. In this use case here, in my demo, I'm using the in-memory channel because it's easy to deploy. So it is, an, it is a broker implementation. It, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the broker. Again, this, the broker is the component which routes the events to um, to the services. Okay, then we, now I'm, I'm, I created the VMware functions namespace. Again, this is the namespace which we will see in the right above window um, in the corner, and we will see uh, our first function showing up there in a bit. Okay, now we deploy our first broker. I, I say first because um, there are also use cases that, that you deploy mul multiple brokers, depending on your needs. Okay, the broker is deployed. Um, this is something we definitely can check. Okay, uh, and broker. Okay, and broker list. Here's the broker. The conditions are all right, are all fine. Five five, perfect. So I will go back to the 
system event space. And now the components for eventing are installed and up and running. That's great. Uh, so the next thing is the event router. So the event router for it, for the installation, we need an override file. So in this override file, we specify the target system. So the vCenter server, the address of it, then the read only user with its password. And we install it in the VMware, uh, yeah, the, the broker. We, we are telling uh, with the override file, we are telling the VMware event router that um, we have a kind broker. Um, the name is default. And I keep that I kept that default and the namespace is VMware functions. Okay. And the next thing is I already added the Helm repository for the event router. And this is why I can search for the specific versions. There are a couple of it. We will go with the latest. So the command is um, pretty easy. Helm install, then the specific namespace. I already mentioned it, it is VMware systems. And then we will use the override file. And now we deploy it. It should pop up. Yes. At the bottom. Let's see, container creating. Um, as far as it reached the status running, I will open the logs for this specific pods. So why I'm telling you this, this is important because when you use the logs, you can see all the events coming into the router. That's pretty cool. So for example, if you would now do something with the vCenter server or within the vCenter server, you would see the event coming in here. So this is perfectly working right now. The VM, um, the, the router is connected to our vCenter server. And now let's deploy our select function. So a select function, that's pretty simple. It will do the following. It will, it will um, send a notification to a specific select channel when a virtual machine powered off event is coming through. So the first thing we need, we need to create a secret for this specific function. And this secret contains sensible data. In our case, it is really just the webhook URL for the Slack channel. So this is the th first thing we've, we've created right now. And then we have a, a function description file. So you see here in the function.yaml, there are two sections. The first section describes the service. This is a Knative service, not a... Kubernetes service, there's a difference. I will not explain it right now, but um, it's important to know that I defined a max and a min scale for it, which basically means I will really just one instance up and running, not more, not less. And I will use a specific version for the container image, which is KNPS slack 1.3. This is for the service, for our function, and then the trigger. Remember, the trigger is this where we describe in which event we are interested in and which will finally invoke our function, our service. So, and this event is um, the M powered off event. Okay, so let's do a simple kubectl apply and then the function YAML and we should see that the, that the function will pop up on the top right corner of my terminal window. This is a function which is written in PowerShell. And that's the cool thing here. It doesn't matter which, or it's up to you which programming language you, you like to use. It could be PowerShell, PowerShell, I, Ruby, Rust, uh, Go, Python, yeah, you name it, it's up to you. And that's cool. And this example here, that's, that is, uh, it is written in PowerShell and I can show you it. Um, so this is the log output. You see here that the init process is complete. Um, it is. It, yeah, it is, it is waiting for the event right now. So we go on. Is the VM running? Okay, let's check if it is running. And this is the great thing here. And um, the AVI load balancer, why I'm seeing it here. Um, you see that the, maybe you, you recognize it that the, that, the, that the circle was red at the beginning. And now it is orange and uh, the, the arrow here is green. That means that our function is now communicating with the load balancer and uh, the load balancer recognize, oh, okay, there is an endpoint which, uh, which yeah, takes this virtual IP address. Okay, I wanted to check if the virtual machine we do not power off at all is up and running, it is. Okay, then,
we yeah show the function lock. You see it up up there. And when I do now power off this virtual machine, you will see at the button where I have the locks open for the event router that the specific or that the virtual uh, that the event VM powered off will come in. Yes, I want to power off. And there it is, powered off. You see here that the function was invoked, detecting change to VM powered off, sending webhook payload to Slack. And hopefully, my Slack channel will show that the function test was successful. Great. So, this is your uh, event driven solution right now implemented on vSphere and is, is consuming your vCenter server events. So I hope that I'm still good in time. Let's go back to my presentation. And uh, yeah, I, I used the event router as my event source. And um, let's go to the next step um, because when, I've met, when I, I showed you two deployment models, and of course, we, we should compare both at least. And on the pro side for the appliance, it's definitely that it is in ready to go appliance form factor, right? So there's an opinionated way to install it on your vSphere environment. It had out of the box day two features like pro the proxy support, the SOC server endpoint configuration, the monitoring endpoint, and to, to uh, let it be connected um, to. Virus Operations Manager, for example, you can use your own TLS certificates. You can, um, it's, it's, it's in a specific section um, during the OVA installation, and you have multiple endpoints, URL endpoints available. This means um, your host name, so your fully qualified domain name slash stats events top bootstrap, for example, would give you um, certain other pages of details and information, for example, statistics of events. Um, then events itself, we made um, use of the open source project SOCI so that you can see the, the events in a, in a nicely uh, displayed GUI and bootstrap, so the logs. And on the other side, uh, which is the pros for the Kubernetes uh, native installation is that you can, that you are not depending on, on, on Kubernetes itself. So on the uh, kind of, so, so the, the solution provider, let's call it that way, um, you can install it um, basically to any Kubernetes cluster and there isn't this one-to-one -one mapping. So there is a one-to-one -one mapping appliance to vCenter server in the um, native Kubernetes way that you can easily implement or roll out multiple event router instances and then you have this uh, many to, um, yeah, many to many relationship. And um, of course, high availability. Um, so you have multiple worker nodes uh, normally running um, for your vSphere cluster. Uh, maintainability, scalability, you can easily scale your cluster and extensibility. It is your cluster. The appliance is a black box, basically, and um, or it should be treated like that. And um, so this is definitely a pro on the, on the right side. And on the con side, um, Again, I've already mentioned it. There's a one-to-one -one mapping for the appliance. It has limited high availability because it's just one appliance. Same applies for scalability and no in-place upgrade or uh, updates. So new version of um, the Viva appliance means new rollout. Okay, and on the, on the other hand, on the Kubernetes uh, installation, you definitely have to deal with the complexity of the stack. Um, you do have the verification and version compatibility checks on your own. We do it for you with the project, with the clients, and there are no out of the box integration. And definitely to mention uh, uh, a pro, what I forgot here on the appliance set is we do have a, a vSphere plugin for the vSphere client and vCenter server so that you can easily uh, install new functions via or via a GUI. You don't have to use the terminal. You don't have to deal with kubectl, et cetera. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and then that's really just for the appliance model. Okay, uh, I hope that I raised your interest in it. And most of the time, there is this question, what about support? And why is it still in Fling and or an open source project? So the good news are we <clears throat> made the 
um, cloud native runtime solutions available for the VMware Tanzu Advanced Edition. And this solution gives you this great capability I've already showed you in my demo. So because cloud native runtimes ships K-native, so that's VMware's official commercial K-native offering. So K-native serving is in it. K-native eventing is right now in beta status, but it should be not that long that it is uh, generally um, available. There are various um, sources available. For example, source, so sources are those, um, those components which connect to event producers, right? So remember, we need a source to connect um, to a specific system. So there are various sources available, for example, for AWS or for vSphere. Um, it has optimized integration in other Tanzu products, like for example, the observ observ um, observability, um, the service mesh offering or build services, and it runs perfectly on, on TKG or TKGI. Okay, um, again, I've mentioned eventing is still in beta status, not any long, not uh, long anymore. And OS to commercial, and great news here. So what Michael basically built, um, the code from the event router is now available as um, the Tanzu sources for Knative. So check out the URL below. You will um, find, or you will be forwarded to the GitHub repository for these sources, and you can check this out then. And because it is an official offering by VMware, you do have support then. Okay, uh, again, I hope I raised your interest. Uh, if you want to know more about the project, I definitely can recommend check out those sessions by Michael Gash and William Lamb. And check out, do not forget, this is what uh, Neo said, uh, the Viva Revolutions unleashing the power of event-driven automation continues here. Um, this is a session which, uh, yeah, was already done. Yeah, should be on Wednesday uh, at VMworld. Your feedback is absolutely appreciated. Please reach out to us, check out our website, follow us on Twitter if you like. If you like the project, join the Slack channel community. It's a great one. Help us there. Um, also, um, have a look at the docs or the, the recent blog announcements for cloud native runtimes. And um, you can download it and, um, yeah install it and have fun with it. Um, please take um, your survey. I hope you liked my session. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great VMworld. Bye-bye.